Here I've got another integral from the integral suggester, and this has a nice substitution to it. Sometimes this is called rationalizing substitution. So in this case, we wanna calculate the definite integral from one half to one of the function one over x to the five thirds times the cube root of one minus x. And in order to motivate the substitution that we use, I wanna take the integrand and rewrite it a little bit. So let's take that integrand. That's the fancy word for the function that's being integrated. So we've got one over five thirds times the cube root of x, one minus x, I should say. So I'm gonna first rewrite that as x to the one third over x squared. So notice that will give us our x to the five thirds in the denominator, given the fact that two is the same thing as six over three and six over three minus one over three is five over three, so we're good to go there. Now I can rewrite this as one minus x to the one third. Now I can take this entire function and rewrite it as x over one minus x, all of that within a cube root, times one over x squared. And I think this setup maybe motivates the substitution given by setting u equal to this. So that's the substitution that we will work off of. So let's see what that substitution will give us. So if u is equal to x over one minus x, then let's maybe solve for x so we can easily calculate dx. Okay, well, then we can maybe cross multiply. We'll get u minus ux equals x. And then from there, we can get everything with an x kind of on one side of the equation. That will be ux plus x equals u, which tells us that x times the quantity u plus one is equal to u, which tells us that x is equal to u over u plus one. So maybe that's a little bit of a cleaner way of writing our substitution. So just to reiterate what we're doing, let's set x equal to u over u plus one. But if we set x equal to u over u plus one, then we need a dx component as well. So let's calculate that over here. We can calculate that by taking the derivative of u over u plus one. But there's actually a trick of doing this without using the quotient rule. So let's take this x equals u over u plus one, and I'll rewrite it as u plus one over u plus one minus one over u plus one. So notice if I combine those back together, the ones cancel and I'm left with what I started with. You might say, well, what's the advantage here? The advantage is that this number that I'm boxing in orange is the constant one, so that when I take the derivative, it's just equal to zero. And then this guy over here, it's easier to take the derivative of. We can just use maybe the power rule, keeping in mind that's u plus one to the negative one. So all of that says that dx can be rewritten as one over u plus one squared du. And there's one last thing that we need to take care of before we finish this off, and that is what happens to the bounds of integration. So let's see, if x is equal to one half, so that would be this lower bound of integration, then that tells us that u is equal to one half over one minus one half, but that's equal to one. So that's pretty clear. Great, and then if x is approaching one, notice we must let x approach one because we have a one minus x in the denominator of our definition of u, then that tells us that u is approaching infinity. So that means our new lower bound in the u integral will be one and the new upper bound will be infinity. Okay, so that being said, let's get rid of this calculation and we'll finish this off. So far, we've done a couple of things. We first rewrote the function inside of our integral in the following form. So we've got the cube root of x over x minus one times one over x squared. And that motivated the following change of variables, which we outlined on the last board. Now let's impose these change of variables. So in other words, we wanna exchange all of the x's for u's. 
So like we talked about before, this will now be an integral as u goes from one up to infinity. And then we'll have the cube root of u, given that x is equal to u over u plus one, which was the same thing, if you remember, as u is equal to x over x minus one. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Sometimes it's useful to look at it solved this way, and sometimes it's useful to look at it solved this way. Okay, nice. And then we'll have one over x squared. So we'll use this equation for that. So one over x squared means that we can just invert this and square it. So that'll be u plus one over u quantity squared, okay. And then we'll have dx, which is this guy right here. So that'll be one over u plus one squared du. And now I think you can probably see where the simplification occurs. We have a u plus one squared here that cancels with a u plus one squared here. And then we're left with the integral from one up to infinity of the cube root of u, which I can write as u to the third over u squared du. But now I can approach that just with the power rule. And maybe let's also do this officially by using a limit. So this will be the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from one to t of u to the minus five thirds du. Again, that's just a simplification of this quotient. Now, applying the power rule, I have this as the limit as t goes to infinity of u to the, let's see, it's going to be minus 5 thirds plus 3 thirds, so that'll be minus 2 thirds, and then we need to divide by this new exponent, that's the same thing as multiplying by 3 halves, then we'll evaluate this at 1 and t. So in the end, that will give me the limit as t goes to infinity of, well, I'd like to do a simplifying trick and exchange the bounds of evaluation by changing this sign. So that's going to leave me with 3 halves minus 3 halves times t to the minus 2 thirds. Great. But now if t approaches infinity, since we've got a negative exponent on t there, this is going to charge off towards zero, leaving us with our final answer of 3 over 2 or 1 and a half. And that's a good place to stop.